Hi there, my name is Ben Swanson. I'm a developer at Enterprise Technologies, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use the Pervasive Migration Utility. Now this tool is specifically designed to migrate projects created in Pervasive 9 into Pervasive 10. So, let's begin. Now the first step is to consolidate all your files from a current Pervasive 9 project into one central location. You can see here, I've already done that as an example. Now you see there's a lot of map files, TF files, SQL scripts, process files. These are all things you'd expect to see in a Pervasive 9 process. But there's also some unnecessary files, things like logs, repositories at XML, files that Pervasive just uses to establish a structure or a layout for your repositories and your repository manager. That's fine though. You can put essentially whatever you want in this folder because the utility will only find and recognize files that it cares about, files that it needs to import this project into Pervasive 10. Now, before we actually run our utility, there's a couple things we need to consider. First of all, Pervasive themselves recommends you only migrate small projects. By that I mean projects that have less than or equal to 75 artifacts, an artifact being an individual file. Now, you'll see in my project, I only have actually 40 artifacts, and that's well below the standard. Also, some of these are junk artifacts, so it's probably even less than that. Now, the second thing you have to worry about, which is a little bit more difficult, is names. Each artifact, according to Pervasive 10, must have a unique name. And when I say unique, I mean the beginning of the name, not including any sort of extensions or even identifiers that Pervasive uses, like map, TF, things like that. Each one of these has to be unique. Now let's actually run the utility. And see here I have three different folders. That's because the utility is actually broken up into three separate tools that you run individually. There's the DI migration tool, the DI packaging tool, and the DI macro migration tool. Now the DI migration tool, the one that you would ideally first run, is what's going to actually convert all of your files, all these pervasive nine files, into pervasive 10 compatible files. The DI packaging tool, that's going to take all those files you just created and it's going to package them up into a zip file that you can easily import into pervasive 10. And last is the macro migration tool. What that will do is take any sort of macro def file you have and do exactly the same thing. It will create a pervasive 10 compatible file that you can then import into pervasive 10. Let's start with the migration tool. Now each one of these tools has a, both a batch file and a jar file. The batch file must be executed with certain parameters in order to run the jar file and get whatever you need out of this tool. In this case, we're trying to convert all these Project 9 files. So, all you need to do to actually run it is open up a command window and pass in the parameters to this batch file. In this case, I've got dash L that specifies a log file location, which is in this case just my desktop. And then secondly is the location of the project you intend to convert, which for me is v9 example. So we'll hit enter and watch what happens. Now this log file is going to be very detailed. It's going to explain to you what exactly happened to each individual file. For example, you might have seen assumption come up several times. That's because considering it's a conversion utility, a migration utility, it's not always 100% certain on what exactly to do with that file, which is why you'll need someone like Emprise Technologies to come in and ensure that your migration is 100%. So, it seems we've finished. Let's take a look. Okay, great. Looks like we have a lot of pervasive 10 compatible files in here. Dot maps, dot data sets, all that. So, the next step is just to package them all up. Now, like I said before, the utility only cares about files that are relevant to it, so you don't need to delete all those original files or anything like that from Pervasive 9. The packaging tool is only going to interact with Pervasive 10 files. So, here we've got a batch file again, jar file. Now all I have to do is execute it. So I'll open up another command window and paste in the command that I've already typed up. Now you see here, this is the ending location. This is where the zip file will appear. This is the beginning location where our current code base is. So hit enter and we've generated the zip file. So you can take a look at that if you want. If you open it up, it essentially just has all those pervasive 10 files that I mentioned. What's going to be interesting is when we actually import this into pervasive 10. But first, there's one other tool, and that is the macro migration tool. So let's open it up. See, you've got a batch file, jar file, just like all the other tools. Now the interesting thing about this one is you can do it in any order. Unlike the migration and the packaging tool, which should be done one after the other, 
The macro migration tool is only migrating that one specific file, your macrodef.xml, so you can do it at any point in the process. Now, after pasting that in, you can see we have the beginning macrodef, the one that's going to be migrated, that's the last parameter, and then we have the target file, the microdef.json. That's the file type for essentially new macrodefs in Pervasive 10. Now, there's plenty of other parameters. I'm only using two for simplicity's sake. So let's hit enter and see it appear on my desktop right here. Now, if you're familiar with the format of a macrodef.xml in Pervasive 9, this is obviously very different, but we don't really care about that because we're going to be importing it. So let's do that. Now, we'll start with the project file as opposed to the macrodef. So, just log in with your credentials like you would. Go to design. And then import the project. Now you can do that with this button here. Now there's going to be two options. You can either import an entire project in one zip. Or you can import an individual file. I prefer to always import the zip file because that way it's just simpler. Otherwise you have to specify what type each individual file is. So I would typically avoid that. Now I see here we have my new migration to. That's because I specified it as new migration to when I was converting it in the uh, packaging tool. So you see we've got our processes, we've got our maps, we've got our configurations, data sets. These all make a little more sense once you're familiar with Pervasive 10. The next step is to import our macros which is a little bit more difficult. So let's head back to the main menu and then to the admin panel. And within here, you'll find the macros tab and this import macro sets button. Now, to actually access the admin panel at all, you're going to need to be a super user, which means anyone who you want to be able to import these macro sets is going to have to have that privilege. Fortunately, once you have it, it's rather easy to do. Just select your JSON, hit save, and suddenly we have all these new macros. Now, the overall this process is fairly simple. However, it's worth pointing out that since it's a migration utility, there is inevitably going to be some differences between your original Pervasive 9 project, which was working 100% perfect, right? Versus your new migrated Pervasive 10 project. And that's where a resource like Emprise Technologies can be tremendously useful. We have several Pervasive certified resources on staff and are more than willing to help you and answer any questions you have. So if you feel like we can assist you in this, give us a call.